Oh, oh hey. Oh, fancy seeing you here, huh? Welcome to the rig. Oh, wow, I didn't expect you so early. We're here to, uh, to just get it done then, huh? Well, uh, what's going on, guys? I'm Derek. Uh, Bogdan just welcomed me back into the world. I felt like I was born again. And uh, this right here is a 2021 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 4x4 package. 144 wheelbase and uh, the high top roof for all of your standing pleasures. Two swivels. There we go. <laughs> oh hey, hey. fancy you? seeing fancy seeing you here again. We uh, we just wanted to welcome you into the main galley featuring two captain's chair swivel seats, not one but two. Uh, when you first come in here, when it comes to having a van, you want everything at a reach that you're going to use first. So first up, we have really accessible light switches here. These operate and dim the floor and the main galley. And then right next to it here we have the Victron Energy Smart Shunt battery monitor. This is going to show us our battery percentage and also right here we have a voltage meter. Directly underneath it we're going to have a nice deep 24 inch plus drawer that comes all the way out. Interior lighting in the cabinet back behind this nice little power source as well too to plug in and underneath here is also well lit this is going to be your liquid propane gas storage venting underneath storage inside. we have a um, a two-phase a two-phase uh, liquid propane regulator on there as well too so that it can operate at high altitudes one thing when it comes to building this van and choosing how to do this uh, we wanted to maximize our space and storage starting at the top here ample storage we have spice rack we have, this could be miscellaneous clothes or bulk storage, and then in here, each one of these are massive birch cabinets with mahogany trim. And this one right here is for all of our power bank friends that need a little bit of extra juice. We have power bank storage for laptops and cameras up in there. Uh, just below it here, we have more storage and the backsplash. More spice racks and jars can go back there. As well, too, this fridge is huge. If you want to store things like cold foods or freeze them, this is a fridge-freezer combo from Isotherm. This is uh, the industry leading fridge when it comes to an upright for steel sealed storage. Uh, so when building the countertops, we wanted to make sure that we get the most out of them in terms of you know overall usage and overall counter space. And so with this, we had in mind a continuation of this counter, which is a result of this wonderful little leaflet that folds in a two in a two part in two parts. So first, little front leaflet that folds down, and then there's a little two hinges over here that hold the rest of it up and so when this comes down it creates a beautiful backrest. Now typically you know when I'm by myself this is a time where I put my feet up and kind of relax you know but like today I have somebody else with me here. Derek why don't oh. you come over here and tell us some more. Room for two don't mind if I do bro. I'm just gonna slide this little lagoon mount out of the excuse me big boy. Oh, oh, yeah, coming right in. Alright nice and cozy. Uh, previous vans, myself and Bogdan, uh, we both just built seating for one because it's pretty fun when you're by yourself. <laughs> but if there's a party for two, this will do, my friends. That it will. Yeah, this is great. This is a lagoon mount table. Uh, this is another extension of the butcher block. You can go ahead and slide this out of the way. What's really nice is it also doubles as a workstation for you on your laptop if you're a worker like Bogdan is or myself, or if you're just trying to have dinner. It's a nice spot to mm -hmm. be able to have some food on top, but. Particularly, if you're a beverage guy like myself, soda waters, beers, what have you, that's what I use right there, my friends. And I think this is probably where you transition off to this beautiful extension to my right. Yeah, so, should, should we show them, folks? Yeah, I think we should show them. I, oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Alright, wow. man. Well, you almost put my whole arm in this thing. So, it acts as a cover and a secondary butcher block. I do have so many butcher blocks up in here now. Yeah. But here we have a deep farmer sink, you know, with a couple little things on the side to keep this from falling down when you're on the road. And here we have our sink. It works and acts as a, obviously a kitchen sink and also as a shower. This thing is extendable by a lot. Hold on a second. We're still going. There's more. In case you want to shower in the bed. Wait, hold on. Oh. I think we reached our limit there, but you get the point, right? I right, get back in there. Here, I'll do that if you want to keep talking. 
What's nice about this too is that window right here to our side, it opens up and you can take this outside. So the shower not only is for the inside or outside, but as Bogdan just showed you this wand, um, you're thinking, where the heck's the shower? We got cabinets, we've got counters, okay, get up we got sinks. Get out of here. Let's show them. Let's All show right, them. We're gonna do we the go. old trade a room. We never see that one, Bogdan. So here's a hidden shower basin, big enough to fit one person comfortably. Bro, don't make me fit two in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you, if I can take your attention up here, we have a back uh, backsplash here that serves, you know, as a waterproofing to the things that are behind it, and then we have shower cubbies in here for you to store your shampoo bottles, conditioner, uh, body wash, uh, whatever it is, you name it. Uh, it's They've been built to a standard size of most shampoo bottles, so most likely they will fit. Uh, now, going back over here this way, we have another storage area, storage opportunity, and that's this seat right here, this previous seat. Uh, before I get to that though, let me show you something really, really neat. Check this out. Can you get over there? Can you see how close that is? Wow. <laughs> if you ever need access to your bus bars of the different zones inside of the van, this is how you would access it. As you can see, a lot of the wiring from you know the van kind of flows in through there. So this is a little access hatch for you to get to. Now, let's go back to putting this up here so we can uh, show you guys the rest of our storage. Now, this guy's a little tricky, but we're going to pick it up with this little handle, pop it up on this side, and then we're just going to pull it out slowly. And voila, more storage. I mean, how many blankets can you fit in there? Because I can fit a lot. <laughs> Oh, before I forget, it's also where you access your uh, kill switch to the battery. So if you don't want to crawl all the way through this little lovely hole to get to the garage and turn off all your electrical, you can just hop on over there, stick your hand in the hole, and turn it off. <laughs> Alright. Now, let's move on further. So, here we go. This is the remote for the S-Bar heater. And if I could have you turn all the way around and point down to that front passenger seat. That is the location of the S-Bar heater that is directly connected to your diesel fuel tank. And why is that a big deal? That means you only need one storage of uh, fuel for this uh, vehicle to support the vehicle itself and the heat inside of it. Which is a nice little, little thing to have. Uh, here we have another switch that is the controller for the overhead uh, LED lights that go all the way around these cabinets under that mahogany trim underneath here and ends right over here. No, oh, we have guests. Whoa, we got to turn on the lights real quick. Who is it? Who is it? You can see there. Oh. What's going on, guys? This would be uh. This would be us waking up from bedtime here, if you noticed. Not me. Not him. Just me. I am uh, five foot eleven. The bed itself is six and a half feet wide, five feet across. So you got about thirty and a half feet of square footage to be able to do whatever you want on that bed. Now, directly above us, to be able to create some great airflow for if you can't sleep that well at night, like me, a little fan action. We got not one fan, but two ceiling roof vent fans. And here's the best part: these fans are controlled by a freaking remote. Here staged on top of this beautifully custom woven wood and backsplash tile. But I go ahead and hit the button here. Boing, boing, boing. Look at that little knob starting to move. But wait, there's more. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there's that one. That one's a little bit squeakier because I think we have it on slow. But then the last fin is right behind you. We're not going to turn that one on because we don't need it right now, but back here for airflow you have two cross vent windows with screens. These are built into two large flare spaces that are uh, outfitted with a tweed and a foam. 
This allows you to sleep sideways back here, which opens up the main floor plan to be able to go ahead and have a shower inside. So these shorter wheelbases, they typically will not have a shower in here, but because of these flare spaces allowing you to be able to sleep sideways, it opened up the entire floor plan and made everything else happen. Uh, more storage over here on the left. I think that's my favorite S word for today. <laughs> Uh, you got a his and hers cabinet on either side. Uh, I learned the hard way that having just one layer of storage in here, it, it really cuts down on what you can stack up. And these little ledgers that are on the front prevent stuff from falling out. If you've ever had a van, you know this, but if you don't, these little guys are lifesavers and let you separate the small stuff. And then dead center, uh, this is cool. We're going to have a fold down tablet holder. So this is kind of going to be like a little display cabinet. So you can put clothes in here, but also too, there's going to be a, a ceiling mounted display tablet that comes out of there as well. Uh, and then along the very back, you'll notice that we have this hidden lighting that goes all the way around. Uh, LED lights are the most common in van builds, but we went above and beyond with marine grade. So we went with neon recess lighting and this neon LED rope that goes around uh, this is 100% waterproof and silicone, so when it comes to like its actual ability to thrive in an environment and diffuse the light a lot better because LEDs can break over time, uh, we went with that material and we hid it behind some beautiful mahogany trim, custom scribed all the way around, and everything you see in here uh, is hidden fasteners. You're not going to yeah, find a single screw say, nail. Where, where are all the fasteners? What fasteners, bro? Where are they? What fasteners, bro? Where? Get fasted. It's getting kind of chilly in here with this cross breeze. <laughs> Might have to turn the heat up a little bit. I don't know, man. Why don't you come back to the garage and we'll show you what powers this giant rig. <laughs> come Let's with go. us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now to take you back to my favorite part of the entire build. The garage space. Back here we have the power grid and a 100% waterproof marine grade garage floor. Let me show you what we got. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. You didn't tell me you were gonna Ogden. Have another, man. Yeah, he's coming out. He's coming out to have some more. No. Oh. All right, folks. Let me just tuck her, tuck her in there. All right. Now back here, this is our garage space. What's important about this garage space is that we need it to store not only the power, but the water and room for all the toys in between. So that's exactly what we did. This was the brainchild of months of planning, weeks of uh, setup, and then days of design work. Took about a couple of weeks to put together, but you have an entire Victron power grid with Battleborn batteries, 400 amp hours of lithium life po 4. These guys are hooked up to a MultiPlus Victron Bluetooth unit. That's the inverter charger. This has shore power and it also powers all of the AC outlets. This guy right here, that's our MPPT charge controller. That as well too manages all of the power that's coming in from our three 100 watt, 300 watt, 36 volt panels up top. And then underneath that here we have our AC breaker box. We have our master brake switch, positive live bus, a couple of switches in between, and then our ground in the back. One of the most important things, way back there, that's our bat battery protect. That right there allows so that no surge will come back or hit the batteries. And then last, we have a smart dongle. That allows me to be able to pull out my phone, hop on, and if you can see it here, folks, I go into Victron Connect, and as soon as I do, it will populate the list, and I can go in, and I can check the battery status right from here. It's going to show us a live feed out. You can see we're at 89%. We're drawing 184 watts with all of the lights on. And we have approximately one day and three hours of straight juice in this thing before we run out. But realistically, this thing will last us a couple of weeks without running out of any power. Um, over here, you'll see we have one of my favorite little features. This is a little access cubby. This guy unlocks, unfolds, comes out to the side, allows you to reach in, and you can reach and grab this switch right in here. So you can do your AC kill switches in case you need to turn on your AC outlets. And then also as well too, you can reach your master kill switch right here. That's for input power master kill switch, the one that Bogdan mentioned earlier, that's for the output side. So all of the components are protected by that switch. All of our charge inputs are protected by that switch there. Over here to your right, the next most important part of our setup. Can oh, you this? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> You almost forgot. Let me just show you this. Um, I cannot take credit for this part. This is 100% my guy, David. David is an absolute genius uh, metal worker. He welded this entire box, came up with the design for the cut for this. The whole thing comes out. 
So that way, if you need to work on the system at all, it is 100% accessible every step of the way. Not, not many uh, setups allow you to access 100%, let alone be able to actually see it. But in this rig, it was really a huge point for all of us to try to make everything the highest quality that we know that we are capable of. And I think that we absolutely delivered on that 100% with this combination of skills. Me personally, I could have never done this alone. But with like enough imagination and enough trust and skills with the team, this thing blows my mind that we were able to do this. So, what is even the point of the plexiglass? The plexiglass to make it dust free, baby! And why do we want our components to be dust free, Derek? Because no, no one wants to destroy their components with dust, because last I checked, electronics really hate dust, and that's how you start little fires. That's right. That's right. That's right. And what's cool about this is we're able to put the power in the same vicinity as the water. But where's the water tank, you ask? Right over here, there's a very special, unique, custom-made water tank that is in an L shape that fits over your wheel well rack. It has your input right here. And then underneath, we have an air compressor pump for your tires. I'll show you more about that in a second. On top, we have a removable bench. This is the forbidden bench. You don't sit on it for obvious reasons. <laughs> but it pops out. It's a pressure fit. And this comes out, just like so. And now you have full access to your water tank. Uh, it has breather valves on either side. It has the output that continues out to the rest of the van on the other. What's unique about this and why it's inside the back is because in the winter time, this sprinter is designed to handle harsh winter conditions and chase storms. Your water will freeze if your storage is outside. And a standard water tank, typically, uh, takes up a lot of room and wastes it. So this is a, a multifaceted choice to get to this. It'll keep the water warm enough that it won't freeze. It frees up the entire floor plan. Mazel tov, excuse me. Happy sixth night of Hanukkah to anyone else out there that's pretending to be Jewish like me. Just kidding, I'm guilty by association. I am a Jew. Mazel tov, for sure. Uh, and when it, when it comes to like actually utilizing this space, it's sealed off all the way around seamlessly with nickel dot marine grade high mill thickness rubber. This right here is a TPO low VOC component and you typically only see it in like yacht engine rooms. So because we have a land yacht and our engines on the other side, we figured might as well throw it inside here that they're in the same place. And every single part of this, seamlessly done, took a couple of weeks to get it done, but you do not know how much effort went into doing this. Another huge shout out to David. Um, and then mahogany trim continued down here. Wrapping around the entire thing is a fastenless system that has a, another neon LED light all the way around. I guess there's a little bit more. Hey, you want to talk, talk about the roof rack? <laughs> Let's talk, talk about, about the roof rack and the tray. <laughs> it's kind of noisy out there, but we're for it. So uh, on the outside of the van, we have a really dope flatline Vanco aluminum ladder here that's framed into the unit using the stock roof rails. Super dope flare spaces from the outside. We got, we got the fat boy on the driver's side. This is the extra wide model, the five incher instead of the three. And uh, this ladder takes us right up to the top and accesses our Rhino Rack roof deck and our Renogy panel so that we can hang out and make sure the, sun's still, the sun is still working. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet guys. Well, welcome to the penthouse suite. This is our top deck here on the 4x4 build. Uh, I'm standing on top of uh, an aluminum custom cut down Rhino Rack stacked with three 100 watt monocrystalline panels wired in series and then you have two of the the hoods here for the remote max air vent fans um, what's really dope about this entire setup is we were able to spec the entire thing ourselves and we installed everything from the roof rails to the decks to the panels to the fans exactly the way we wanted it and the biggest thing was we wanted to allow two people to still be able to hang out up here. So you got plenty of room to be able to hang out with a couple of people and uh, still be able to maximize your venting and your sunlight usage to be able to keep those batteries charged. Oh, hello. Hey. Oh, hey there. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, that's a wrap for the day, guys. Uh, I would say that the biggest takeaway is something that we didn't even mention. The hardest work that we put in, and I'm sure Bogdan can agree, is everything that's underneath the finish yeah, work. Yeah. yeah, we spent a lot of time getting nothing but the best things that you could provide for a van like this. 100% um, on the floor, 100% coverage in kill mat sound deadener insulation, 100% uh, coverage for 3M thin slit, which is sound dampening, and also highly, highly insulating material. 
Um, and then I would say the next biggest thing was we didn't just GRK or like throw random screws into the sheet metal. We actually drilled out and riv nutted every single stud that's in here. And if you're familiar with the riv nut tool, you know it's an absolute bastard. I don't know if you're bleeping that one out, but we'll keep the fucking socks. And we, yeah, we made it happen. We, it was a really, really good uh, aspect of the van because it guaranteed the structural integrity, which laid an unbelievable foundation. And from the, the bare sheet metal, taking everything out, putting in the sound deadener, the insulation, the strapping, uh, the rib nutting, and then ultimately the sheathing that allowed uh, all these guys and myself to be able to put this unbelievable countertop, this unbelievable backsplash, these cabinets, overhead piece. Mm -hmm. The amount of effort that went into get this to look like it has no fasteners whatsoever, that's really what you know. I think I'm most proud of for sure. I can't speak for Bogdan. He can tell you a little bit more about stuff that we didn't show you. But from, uh, from a standpoint of you really get the most out of your product by starting with a strong foundation when it comes to just being well insulated, you know, like ugh, the heater, everything. Uh, it's just we, we only went with the best products in here. And you want to talk a little bit about like the Everest Batcher heater? Maybe that's a hidden unit right in between these legs. I mean, it looks pretty stocked. There's not much to talk yeah. about. It yeah. came out great. It yeah. powers really well. <laughs> it's also hooked up to the diesel uh, fuel tank, as I mentioned earlier. And, um, you know, everything just came together pretty well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully somebody can enjoy this uh, to the most of its abilities. Yeah, for sure. That probably wraps us out to the point of like, if you are interested in this, please click on the link provided below <laughs> as we wave our hand. Yeah, well, can you frame it inside Bogdan's hands? Hold it up, right in his face. Yeah, right there. There we go. Click that link there, folks, and follow Bogdan's face to your next dreamy ride. Uh, this was an unbelievable project. We are super proud of what we created. If you have any questions, please reach out. We'll provide our contact information at the end of this video, all of the links to be able to check it out further. And um, we're really happy to share this with the world because this is definitely uh, the first one we've done together, but it definitely won't be the last. This layout we're very proud of, and we want to be able to grow on top of it. And I think that this is going to make a lot of people very happy, whoever enjoys this. Cheers.